Well, I want to welcome you today to our devotion. Today I'm talking about how do we possess the promise that God has for us. Every one of us has a promise. Every one of us, God has an amazing plan that He wants us to step into. And there's certain things that we can do to possess the land and really live a life of abundance. So I want to read to us today from Exodus 3 verse 8. So I have come down, says God, to deliver them from the power of the Egyptians and to bring them up from that land to a good and spacious land, to a land flowing with milk and honey. I just love the scripture because it just shows us what God's heart for us is. He wants to take us from the land of the Egyptians. The land of the Egyptians represents a land of hardship. It represents a place of, uh, of slavery where you don't really have freedom. And he wants to take us to a place of that is good, a spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey. Such an amazing land that sometimes I think that we cannot fathom. He wants to take us to those kind of places. But the first part of this verse is so important because God says, I want to come and deliver them from the power of the Egyptians. You know, the Israelites were delivered from Egypt. There were 10 plagues that God had sent on Egypt and he delivered them. He, he did a mighty miracle in parting the Red Sea. But many of the Israelites were not delivered from the power of the Egyptians. They were still under the influence of the Egyptians. Because the Bible says that in the wilderness, they still had idolatry in their hearts. They were still living in sexual immorality. They were living for the moment. And we see this in 1 Corinthians 10 verse 1 to 11. It says that, Moreover, brethren, I do not want you to be unaware that our fathers were under the cloud. They were baptized into Moses in the cloud and into the sea. They ate the same spiritual food. They drank of the same spiritual rock. That rock was Christ. But with most of them, God was not pleased. Why? Verse 8 says, they, well, verse 7 says, they became idolatrous. Uh, and verse 8, they, they, they committed sexual immorality. And they lived for the moment. Verse 11 says, Now all of these things happen so that they are examples to us. There is a difference in a life of somebody that lives for the moment. When you wake up and you think, Well, I'm just going to live and enjoy my day today. What's, what's going to be fun to do? Um, oh, well, let me, let me go and shop. Let me go and um, watch a lot of television. Let me just uh, go hang out for, with friends. And those things aren't bad things to do. But somebody that lives with a promise in mind, and for the Israelites, it was Canaan. It was the promised land. When you live with a promise, you make different decisions than those that have no promise those that are not focused on the promise. And we see how that the Israelites were so obsessed with what they were going to do today. They just wanted daily fulfillment. And therefore, the Bible says that God was not pleased with them because they committed sexual immorality. They, they were just living for the day. They just wanted their food for today. And then when they weren't happy with their food for today, they wanted meat. And, and the Bible says that God gave them leadness for their souls. But there were two men in that whole company of the Israelites that really had the promise in mind. And that was Joshua and Caleb. They were living for the promise. And they were yearning for the promise. And when they went and spied out the land, they were ready to take the land. And I want to encourage you today, don't just live for today. Possess the promised land. And on your way, make decisions that are congruent with you possessing the land. What does that look like? That means when you're, when you're making your daily decisions, you're preparing yourself to possess the land. Your promised land may be a business that God is telling you to pursue. You know, when everybody else is going out and, and just uh, having fun, you're busy researching. How am I going to make this business successful? What are the new technologies on the market that I can use to get my product out there? You're thinking about tomorrow and what you can do and how you can fulfill that promise for your life. 
And in the same way, God has a promise for us. The, the promise of fulfillment is physical, spiritual, financial. God wants us to promise in all to uh, to prosper in all areas of our lives. But we have to have that vision in mind that God has a, a land flowing with milk and honey for us and that it is possible for us to live a life of fulfillment. Many times we don't have a life of fulfillment because we don't believe that there is that special promise for us. We don't think we're worthy. And I want to tell you today that you are. You know, God the Father sent Jesus Christ to die for you because you're worthy. And he has a promise for you. And if you believe that, and if you would receive his love today, you can start living in that hope that God has an amazing promise that is individually suited to your life. But you have to start making choices that will set you up to take hold of that promise. And that means writing down a vision that God gives you and asking God, what is my next step to fulfill that vision? I want to encourage you today, if you haven't done that, sit down with God and say, Lord, what is the vision for my life? Where am I now? And what is the vision? Where do I want to be? And then believe that you can inherit that promise. You can live that life. I want to pray with you today. Father, I thank you that you are a God of hope. You are a God that wants us to inherit our promise, Lord God. And Lord, today I pray for everybody that's watching, that they will be encouraged to step out of just living for today and for the pleasures of today, Father God, and that they will make decisions that will set them up in the long haul, Father God, to, to possess a promise, Lord God, not for only for them, but for their children and for their children's children. Thank you, Father God, that we can make decisions that will set our generations up for success, Father God. And I praise you, Lord, for vision. I praise you, Father God, that we can be delivered from Egypt, Lord God, that the power of the Egyptians can be broken over us, Lord God, the, the power of the world, Lord God, the power of worldliness, Lord God, and, and the bondage of slavery can be broken over us through and in the mighty name of Jesus. We bless you today. Amen.